what's poppin' people? How's it going, man? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well this day. I really hope that, man. And welcome back to Chelsea News, the series where I look at Chelsea football news headlines, consolidate the data, present it to you guys, and get your opinion on what's being said. And really, the three things I'm going to be talking about today, well, there's two news stories and something else that I want to bring to the table. The first news story is the Women's Super League has been cancelled. And Chelsea women are in second place, one point behind Manchester City, but they have a game in hand. So would sporting merit dictate Chelsea win the league? I don't know. <laughs> Frank Lampard has called upon Armando Broja to come and save Chelsea from their striker woes. Basically, the young centre forward is training with the first team yet again, showing Frank Lampard shows a great amount of trust in the young player. And I want to pose the question to you guys, can Broja replace Mishi Batshuayi in a transfer market where buying a striker might be difficult? This kid scores a lot of goals. Maybe he could be the next Chelsea youngster to really shine. With Willian on the way out, the number 10 shirt is going to be available and there's no real obvious candidate who it should go to. Of course, loads of people will say, well, it should go to Christian Pulisic. We thought he was going to get it instead of Willian. Anyway, a lot of people will say, no, it has to be Hakim Ziyech. He's like a big money signing. Well, a relative amount money signing. Surely goes to him. But also there can be a case made for born and bred Chelsea man Mason Mount, who plays as a number 10, kind of. So I want to talk about those players and make a case for them. But first, I want to take a second and urge you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you haven't done so yet. Only if you want to, man. I update daily content regarding Chelsea Football Club and you might like it, so consider subscribing. But if you do, make sure you do hit that bell notification icon and why not drop a like on this video, please. All right then, let's get into it. I don't know what's going to be happening with it, so let's quickly talk about the Women's Super League. Chelsea are a dominant force in women's football and the table would dictate the same this season. They're one point behind Manchester City in second and they have a game in hand. With how Chelsea are playing this season, a lot of people tipped them to win the title. So the recent news that the Women's Super League has been cancelled for Nito has put the authorities in a precarious situation. If the league is to be decided on some form of sporting merit, then surely, surely they have to give Emma Hayes' women the edge and give the title to Chelsea Football Club. It's going to be a delicate situation and of course it's important to Chelsea Football Club as an institution but to be honest it can show parallels into other you know parts of football maybe even the men's game with how the FA are going to deal with it. One to keep an eye on we'll see the developments there hopefully Chelsea win the league and that'll be interesting to see their method of thinking and how that reflects in the rest of the world of football. All right then, let's talk about Armando Abroja. Armando recently signed his first senior professional contract with the Blues. He scored a lot of goals at youth level. Frank Lampard has had him training with the first team for quite a lot uh, in the earlier stages of this season. Man, this whole like season stopping, still this season, but not this season as we know it, kind of blows my mind and I don't know how to talk sometimes, you know? Yeah, I'm sure you know. And Frank Lampard has called upon the services of Broja again. Again, Batshuayi, and Giroud and Tammy Abraham all available, but that doesn't matter. Frank Lampard sees great ability in Brozier, and I think more so and more so that he's going to show an immense amount of trust in the youngster moving forward into his Chelsea Football Club project. I actually want to ask the question to you guys. In a transfer market where it might be really difficult to bring in a striker, even a second striker, it might cost a lot of money. And if Batshuayi really is to be sold this summer, which there is a lot of speculation Batshuayi will be sold, Giroud signed the extension, Batshuayi's only got one year left, yet he still has value in himself as an asset. Do you know what I mean? He's in his prime, he can score goals. He's never really worked at Chelsea, but he could score a lot of goals elsewhere and may, you know, be the first team striker at another club. And he probably will back himself to do that. So he might be happy to go. Chelsea might be happy to sell Michy Batshuayi. So, you know, the Chelsea are going to need a second striker. And if that's going to cost way too much money dipping into the European market, could Frank Lampard, Jody Morris and Joe Edwards trust teenage sensation Armando Broja? 
Maybe. We all know what Giroud offers, but if you need a striker with pace who can run in behind, who's basically a little bit more closer in the mould of Tammy Abraham than he is Olivier Giroud, Armando Brogia could be your man, and I think Frank Lampard will trust him. He's already given him his Premier League debut, which is massive. He knows how many goals he's scoring at youth level, and let's be real, Armando's built big. He's not like a little petite striker. He looks like he can handle himself in the top flight of English football. So, generally, I'll be quite excited to see him playing more and more and more on this Chelsea first team. And I want you want you know, you want to back your own, don't you? I want to back this kid to do well for Chelsea. So, give him a chance, I say. Right, number 10, the iconic number at Chelsea Football Club, and many, you know, many clubs, basically. Obviously, after Eden Hazard, it sort of is a heavy weight to bear. I get why it was given to Willian, long-term servant, very skillful player, has the technical ability of a number 10. Frustrated people a little bit because they wanted it to go to more of a long-term holder of the shirt, but it does look like Willian is gonna be gone this summer, so the number 10 shirt is gonna be available, and I, like I've explained at the top of the video, want to make a case for who I think are the three most plausible candidates. Basically, Christian Pulisic, Hakim Ziyech, and Mason Mount. Let's start with Hakim Ziyech. Obviously, he's more of a senior player, 27 years old, and he could definitely wear the number 10 in terms of the type of player he is. He's going to play between the lines, he's a creative player, he is a cam, so all those things immediately suit number 10. He's going to be relatively marketable as well because he's Ajax's best player coming to Chelsea in his prime. Granted, he's not a £100 million signing, I think he's, you know, £32 million, which is an absolute bargain if you consider what player you're getting. So, off the bat, if there wasn't any other sort of main contenders, it would be an absolute easy decision to give Hakim Ziyech the number 10 at Chelsea. And you know what? He might end up getting it. The next is Christian Pulisic. A young player, like Mason Mount is, but I think Mason Mount might have a different edge on Pulisic because he's been at Chelsea his whole life where Pulisic's literally just been dropped into Chelsea as a young player. So it might be a heavy burden to just come and wear the 10 when you don't know that much about the club. But he is number 10. He wears the number 10 for USA. That's a heavy weight. He is that kind of attacking player. Very exciting. He's a dribbler. He's kind of like Eden Hazard in many ways. So there would be a sort of continuity there of it going to, I know, Willian in between. But they're all dribblers. Hazard, Willian, Pulisic. It could make sense. And I don't think anyone would really be surprised if Captain America takes the number 10 shirt for Chelsea Football Club. You see? Now, a lot of people might say, right, so Pulisic and Ziyech, they're the two obvious candidates for the number 10 and you'll probably be right but I want to add Mason Mount into this because although he's been playing as a number eight a lot he generally is a cam he's a number 10 generally you know that's what he's done a lot of his work and he's been at Chelsea since he was a little kid and whether you like it or not Mason Mount is so 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 integral to how Chelsea play football that when you you know even when he's not having a shining game scoring goals or assisting goals he's the one player that's pressing constantly and always doing running industry etc the really important part of the game that's not necessarily glamorous if mason mount got the number 10 it would be more like a sort of representing what this chelsea means you know bringing in quality sure but also nurturing their own product you know frank lampard's chelsea from the academy talent bred at cobham mason mount been there forever, amazing work ethics, very, he knows what it means to play for Chelsea and also is an attacking central midfielder, he can play in the hole which is the number 10. So in many ways you could make a very strong case for Mason Mel wearing it but at the same time if you want marketability, if you want exotic like attacking flair as a number 10 you probably go for Christian Pulisic or Hakim Ziyech. For me at the moment, although I like the romance of giving it to Mason Mel, Personally, I would choose Hakim Ziyech. I think seniority and experience would pull rank here at age 27. You know, that number 10 could go to Mason Mount in four years. You know, it could go to him afterwards. Do you know what I mean? So I quite like the idea of it going to Ziyech and probably makes most sense in terms of selling shirts. Anyway, what do you guys think? Who would you give the number 10 shirt to? We've got number nine on Tammy Abraham. We've got some more iconic shirts in there. Would you give it to Pulisic? Ziyech. Do you understand me making a case for Mason Mount? I would say someone like Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who I absolutely love, but in terms of positional, he's even he plays even deeper than Mason Mount. It just doesn't really suit the number 10 number, like, stylistically, do you know what I mean? It's like, he's not a DM, but he's very much a deep central midfielder. 
Um, I know you could look at Modric, who wears number 10. He plays very deep, I guess. But I don't know, it would just seem weird giving it to Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I kind of like his number 12 as well. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. Uh, I also want to hear your thoughts on Armando Brogia. Do you think he can replace Michy Batshuayi and we might be okay with him, Giroud and Tammy Abraham next season? Let me know. And feel free to comment on the Women's Super League. Do you think Chelsea are going to be given the title? Do you think there'll be any parallels drawn to men's football? Let me know. If you have enjoyed today's content, guys, I would urge you to like this video. That helps me out a lot. And why not subscribe if you've not yet done so yet? Join the party, man. Jump aboard the hype train and all that whatever hyperbole I could say. Feel free to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, you lot. Enjoy the football that's maybe happening soon, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me be